Well, for a closer look at Chinese investment in Latin America, Remy Piet joins us live via Skype. He's a senior partner at consulting firm Ombeli Advisory. Always good to have you on. It's a pleasure, Rochelle. So first off, talk about the ways that we've seen China really focus on investment in Latin America and why. Well, obviously, in Latin America makes a, a lot of sense for, for China. There's an obvious compatibility of, of, of interest between the, the two blocks in terms of microeconomics, in terms of, of resources. Uh, the Latin America suffers from a structural lack of, of investment capacity and, and domestic savings, and, and at the same time has large wealth in natural resources, but also very interesting assets in a series of, of sectors from you know, distribution of energy to transports to also, as you were rightly mentioning, some, some uh, food production that are very important to, to China at a time of, of trade uh, conflicts with the US or, or Europe growing. And at the same time, China offers, therefore, this capacity of of funding and, and, and moving forward on, on key projects that are needed for especially infrastructure or others in different countries in, in Latin America. What's interesting to see is that, you know, traditionally four countries have been the main target of investment from, uh, from China, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Venezuela, Ecuador over the last, say, 10 years. But we're seeing a more and more interest in, in, in other countries, Peru, Chile, uh, Uruguay, Mexico also are now, you know, coming close to the top of the list of priorities and the different sectors also, not only in terms of, you know, tech taking some debts or, you know, uh, uh, taking over state-owned companies, but really looking beyond natural resources, which is still a main uh, uh, element and sector of, of interest, but also, as I was mentioning, you know, new technologies, retail, uh, a series of, of, of energy transmission lines that are very much of, of interest to, to, to China. The question will be whether, uh, on top of the merger and acquisition strategy, will you be able to operate some of those projects and understand the complexities of Latin American economies? And as you touched on energy there, we know that Chinese energy companies have really strengthened their presence in Latin America in the past few years. A wave of investments extending to logistics, services, um, as well as telecommunications and other things. Talk more about China's energy-related projects there. Well, there, there are several indeed, and as you were mentioning, it's not only about the generation of energy, whether offshore or onshore, it's also much uh, and more and more about you know, transmission lines and distribution lines. We're seeing that in, in Brazil and Argentina, obviously, that has been the, the traditional trickling down in terms of sectors of, of Chinese investment. Then the question becomes of, you know, how do you adjust your, your strategies of, of, of investment towards including elements of local content? We're seeing more and more regulations in, 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 in most countries, if not all, uh, of trying to ensure that, you know, investment translate into to local content, local, local hires, technology transfer to a certain extent, and this is very important to the stability and the sustainability of those investments, whether you understand the country where you are operating and, and are able to work not only at the national level with the help of the embassy, but more importantly at the regional and local level, understanding the political, social and economic forces that can be make or break a successful investment for Chinese companies, especially in the energy sector, as you were mentioning. And as you mentioned that balancing act then, how would you characterize the strategic cooperation between China and Latin America in trade, given China's relationship with the U.S. and Australia? Well, that, that's very interesting indeed. And the, the increased scrutiny from, from the U.S. or Australia on investment from China has actually led as an, on an directly uh, to, to an increase of interest to investment in a key, uh, you know, uh, Latin American countries. You know, on these elements, Colombia, Peru, and, and, and Mexico are the ones that are, you know, much more focused on by, 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 by China as opposed to a traditional uh, destination. Uh, the, the, uh, on looking at issues of trade, we see the importance of, of, uh, of obviously mining trade. 61% uh, of, of minerals of, of exports out of Peru actually are, are from the mining industry, and most of them are going in towards, towards China. So the element here of, of the compatibility in terms of asset production of raw materials for Chinese industries, but also the know-how and the capacity from China to invest in other sectors where the capacity for investment has been limited by COVID or limited by the capacity of, of, of states to move forward on, on much-needed infrastructure, that makes a lot of sense for increased uh, interest from Chinese, uh, Chinese companies and Chinese investments. And again, understanding how each of the countries work to make sure that you will not face issues of, of reaction from population or the lack of understanding towards local content strategies and regulations so that you are sustained and, and, and profitable in the long run, not only in terms of short-term interest for acquisition. Now, something else that obviously a lot of countries in the region and the world are facing are this commodity price surge. How does that relate to Latin American economies and their imports to China? 
Well, it's, it's of course all important because of the importance of, of, of commodities in Latin American economies. I mean, you can probably look at you know two sets of countries: the ones that are more dependent on energy exports rather than the ones that are more looking at mineral exports. On these ones, you definitely have Chile, Peru, uh, Colombia to a certain extent, Brazil also. And the rise of commodity prices over the last four to five years, especially now you're looking at copper interest and 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 a historical high for for copper prices, makes it that in more important for for China to secure its own supplies. For, for, for its industry and domestically. And therefore, you know, the, this key interest to a series of different assets, I and mean, we see a, a lot of investors doing that due diligence right now, potentially grabbing some assets in the copper market, in the gold market, in a series of, of different key commodities that are so important for the uh, industrial uh, development of, 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 uh, of Chinese industries. You mentioned lithium also just a, a few minutes ago on, on, the, on the previous uh, uh, intervention. And definitely looking at, at, at lithium assets in Argentina, Bolivia are, are a series of, of of eyes from China are geared towards these for acquisition in, in the mid-run run. Well, certainly lots to watch there. Thank you so much. Remy Piette, Senior Partner at Ombeli Advisory.